What kinds of engagement are associated with a propensity to subscribe? Hi everybody, I'm Greg Crable and this is my daily podcast, Something I Learned Yesterday, in which I take one issue from the world of publishing and try to explain it in about three or four minutes. This one's getting closer to five. I've been enjoying this website called The Audiencers, so I signed up for their e-newsletter and the welcome email pointed me to this great article, Ask the Experts, What are the Most Valuable Engagement Metrics to Measure in a Subscription Model? That's great stuff. It's a crucial topic because people talk a lot about engagement, but it's not exactly sure what they mean by that. You can measure engagement a lot of different ways. Which are the ways that actually matter, especially if you have a subscription model? You should read the article yourself, but I'm going to pull out a few points that I found interesting. It's important to distinguish content engagement from propensity to subscribe. In other words, a person can be very engaged with your content and never have any intention of subscribing, while another person might take specific actions that are highly correlated with subscribing. An example is e-newsletter sign-up. If e-newsletters are sent at a set time on a set frequency, this can form a habit, which is the kind of engagement you want. You've also created, by sending your e-newsletter, a direct connection with that customer rather than waiting for them to come to you. You can go to them. Registration is also value. People who valuable people who register are far more likely to subscribe than anonymous people. The next thing they draw out surprised me a little bit, but it makes sense. Exposing readers to a diverse array of topics and authors is better for promoting subscriptions. You don't want your content recommendation engine <clears throat> to send people down a spiral, always showing them the same topic or the same authors. If they see your service as providing a breadth of information, they're more likely to subscribe. Time spent on your website or app is also a good predictor of conversion. The conversion probability increases by 130 times, I'm quoting now, if the media time increases by 10 minutes per week. The churn probability is halved if the media time increases by 10 minutes per week. It's important to remember that engagement really isn't the goal. The goal is to get a loyal subscriber. So. A back-to-front approach to this question is to find out what your loyal subscribers do and focus on those actions. That is presumably trying to get other people to behave, behave the same way. The Lenfest Institute, whoever that is, found that readers are more likely to become subscribers when they read more than five articles per month or if they provide their email address. The article includes a useful chart that maps various actions to increase likelihood to subscribe. Someone who reads five or more articles per month or has provided an email, that is equated with a 5x to 10x increase in likelihood to subscribe. If they follow your brand on social media, that one's next at 4x to 6x, reading multiple categories of content, accessing your content across multiple platforms, or if they live in your market area and read local news, all those things are associated with a two to three times boost in propensity to subscribe. Now, this is all great stuff, and I encourage you to read the article, but there's a logical issue that I'm struggling with a little bit. Let's say you find that your faithful, longtime subscribers are far more likely to sign up for your e-newsletter. Does it follow that promoting your e-newsletter is going to transform those signups into faithful long-time subscribers. It doesn't seem to follow. You've changed the conditions of the test. I do believe it's a good idea to promote the kinds of behavior that are so associated with long-term customer value, but I suspect that as you do that, the numbers are going to change. That is, the commitment of the people who signed up for your e-newsletter before you started rigorously promoting it won't be the same as the commitment of the latter group. Still, it's a smart thing to do. Find out what your committed people are doing and try to promote those things on your website. Anyway, that's my thought for today. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And uh, remember to read the article. It's really good. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.